What up in this John? It's your boy IBS Kelso coming back with another MX Bikes banger. And today is the official start of Kelso Supercross Academy for noobs. With MX Bikes rapidly growing every day, I think it's only fair that we get some type of guide to get yourself into Supercross. Whether you are just completely struggling and don't know where to start, or you kind of just like on the edge of qualifying for something and you just don't know how to hit a certain technique. I'm here to show you that with just a little bit of moto sessions with me. I promise I can get you from a noob to a pro. And the importance today is going to be the when, why, and how to see bounce for Supercross. Um, there's a lot of technique that goes into it and just understanding whether you're coming up short for something or not. So that's what we're going to be dabbling into. We're here at a California test site. We're on the Husqvarna 250. Everything will be tested on a 250, especially for you noobs that you should not be on a 450 for Supercross yet. And um, yeah, thank you guys for clicking on this video. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe button. And let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so the method of seat bouncing isn't just to do it. There's obviously a, a reason why we seat bounce, and that's if we're gonna case something or come up short, we wanna get height. We wanna bring the bike to us and not below us, right? That is why we seat bounce. You don't just seat bounce to seat bounce, right? And the reason being said is like, say you're going around this corner, but you don't use all the corner, and now you have less, less speed. You seat bounce to get yourself a little higher. As you can see right there, I brought myself up, but it still wasn't enough. So that's a lot. what a lot of you guys do. You'll cut down and you don't give it enough speed. If you seat bounce, you'll be able to at least try to grease it and or get over it. That is why we seat bounce. Now, how to seat bounce is simply going here and at standing at the highest peak. All you want to do is focus on sitting at the highest peak of your jump. Sitting down at the highest peak of your jump is seat bouncing. Simply like this, sit down, and you'll see yourself bring the bike to you. Now, this is what it looks like in third person. At the highest peak, I'm sitting down, and the bike is coming to me, right? I'll go show that one more time. Sitting down at the highest peak of my jump is what's bringing the bike six inches to me, right? That's getting us that extra height in the, in, in the air. If we're coming up short for something, or we know we're gonna case, if you can at least seat bounce and get six inches off the ground, you might be able to grease it. Now I'm gonna show you the, the best way I can show you by trying to hit big lines as a noob without trying to seat bounce. I'm not talking about doubles, I'm talking about actually trying to send stuff without seat bouncing. That is typically what will happen if you don't give yourself enough momentum through the corner and or if you think you can drive out of it and not seat bounce that's what's typically going to happen there as well getting the pop off of a off of a double right you're kind of just casing as well not seat bouncing over jumping now you're out of you're out of section you're like out of the rhythm right that's the biggest thing is you, like the whole reason why rhythm sections are a rhythm section is for you to actually have rhythm but if you're not giving yourself the extra pop right here if you're not going to seat bounce and do stuff like this you just can't find a rhythm or groove now i'm going to go through with actually seat bouncing and show you what's the difference. Six inches off the ground, six inches off the ground. Right here, I went for a quad without even the momentum or speed, but I was at least able to pop myself up to give myself a fighting chance. Six inches again, six inches again, it is just bringing yourself higher to get yourself through, right? That's all it is, that's literally all seat bouncing is. Just right here at the top of your peak, sit down. Just sit down, I promise you, it will help you even fight, give you a fighting chance to do this, from last time you saw when I didn't even see bounce, I I literally was completely out of out of the ordinary, out of the sorts. That's all seat bouncing is, just to give you that extra fighting advantage if you are gonna case something or if you're gonna come up short and you don't have the speed. But we'll go one more time and then I'll show a third person view of it. But here you're cutting down, you're not giving yourself all that, that rail speed and that's all you're doing. That's all you're doing is just giving yourself a fighting chance and that's why we see bounce, right? And I'll show you right now that I don't need to seat bounce other than the quad if I literally just keep my momentum up. That's all you need to do. You don't need to seat bounce anywhere but probably a quad, and that's how you get a quad out. I never sat seat bounced at all until I got to a quad. Obviously, on a 250, quadding is super hard. All right, railed my corner, kept my speed up. I sat, I stood up the whole time, didn't need to get over it, stood up the whole time, and then simply going for a quad. I sat seat bounce at the highest peak of my jump. Once again, seat bouncing is if you are not going to make it or you're not keeping the momentum. It's not just the seat bounce to seat bounce. Right? A lot of people have trouble with that. You'll literally seat bounce for no reason. You already have the height. Now you're over jumping something. Right? That can that literally is a real thing. If you're gonna seat bounce something for no reason, you are gonna over jump it and it's gonna look really ugly. It's literally you not being able to get the height. I simply was able to get the speed and momentum, didn't need the seat bounce. Did not need to seat bounce again, but obviously for a quad, this is where you really want to seat bounce, and that is what's giving you that extra little pop. Now, where a lot of people struggle is trying to do a triple onto a table, 
and the biggest thing is just making sure you get that plush and or grease right not greasing is what's slowing your back end tire which is greasing that and you can see right there so it really kind of goes hand in hand that you make sure you get the seat bounce on this first double off right here to go here seat bounce grease it and then you can seat bounce again and get the height now you're kind of bullying right if you don't do that it just looks really ugly and now all of a sudden you're trying to fight for your life to get through the section right clipping your back tire now it's like oh i didn't even make it you know what i mean that's not seat bouncing you know that that is the troublesome of not seat bouncing now as to seat bouncing everything you can really see that when you go here seat bounce at the highest peak i really was able to get over that and get the drive seat bounce again you see how high i get and able to get onto the table that is the best key about seat bouncing right now obviously it's going to take you guys a little bit of time to actually really learn this and work on it and master the craft but you can see how much I'm cutting down on this table that's going to automatically start me to need to seat bounce because I'm not getting the drive. Everything is about the drive. So I've already cut down. I've already ruined my chances of actually keeping my momentum up. So now I have to seat bounce to keep my drive and start picking up momentum. Seat bounce again. Boom. Gives you higher in the air. Now I love this spot of the track because I think a lot of people can relate that uh, this is probably a really hard situation of trying to keep your momentum up and if you can't keep your momentum up you're going to case just like that. You know that without seat bouncing is probably the hardest thing is like if you're not keeping your momentum up you need to seat bounce it. Now I can show you right now you can easily get over this without seat bouncing both both of them right simple as it is just you know I, over time you're going to learn to keep your throttle on but this is for people that are having struggling not keeping your throttle and needing the seat bounce right that's the way if you're checking up seat bounce right there you're able to grease it and we'll go again as well seat bounce grease it at least give yourself a fighting chance to continue yourself in to the section that's all seat bouncing is about you can just see right here with the seat bounce as i do it i'm sitting down and easy peasy getting the seat bounce in you can see where I'm sitting down, it's at the highest peak, and that's what's giving me that extra boost. Right here, right here, I see I'm coming up short, seat bounce, just gave me my six inches to grease. I mean, literally grease. Now, key situation here is that I actually got a lot of momentum and stuff, and I just didn't sit the seat bounce. The seat bounce is what made me case a little bit. If I would've gave myself that six inches off of this, I actually would've been literally actually okay, and I would've been able to salvage maybe it would have been a little bit of slippery but i would have been able to at least try to get that next triple in so no seat bounce casing just a bit all right so a little recap on what we focused on today in the academy is seat bouncing the when why and how and the when and how is simply at the highest peak of your jump work on literally sitting down right here sit down you'll see you bring the bike up to you about six inches and the why we do this is simply if we're going to be casing something or coming up short or we're not keeping our momentum up simply right here cutting down super early seat bounce it'll literally allow you to get that extra six inches in the air and allow you to actually grease it same thing here if you know you're going to be coming up short not keeping your throttle open and or quads seat bounce you're going to be able to make it but do not rely on seat bouncing right still work on corner speed still work on throttle control stuff like this will allow you to only use seat bouncing in a dire matter if you know you're coming up short if you're having a hard time with consistency right but on top of that if you are a noob i recommend to actually i encourage you to over exaggerate this situation seat bounce everywhere work on getting as high as you can in supercross before we start working on cutting down uh and staying lower right it's the biggest thing is a lot of people struggle is getting the height in supercross to get over certain things so focus on that and i promise you you'll be a better rider um, let me know down in the comment section if this session did help you out in any way shape or form um, and let me know also what you would want to see next that you think you need work helped on or worked on so yeah make sure to hit that like button subscribe button this is jv's testing sites for supercross um i will put the link down in the description below i believe it's like four dollars and you get like six different tracks um so thank you guys so much and uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next video up 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 peace Bye.